Hey everyone, welcome to the new module in our Agroforestry Academy online course. In this module, we're going to be discussing the basic techniques used in agroforestry. So we've just learned the principles, the basic principles, and now we're going to talk about how to apply them and how they are actually done and practice. Which techniques have we got to make sure that all this works out? And the first one, and the most important and basic one is covering the soil. Yeah, uh, you know, we can go on and on about covering the soil, but really, you know, we've spoken about it, the matter, the organic matter bringing in, it really is one of the most fundamental. It really is, if you ask me one thing, you know, one thing I can do to help my plants at home, one thing I can do today to really, you know, transform my crop, you know, cover the soil. Cover the soil is the most important thing. It's as simple as this. If you don't cover the soil, you will not have life in the soil. No one wants to live exposed to the sun. The life will go. The worms, the insects, they will go away. You know, all you have to do is just look for somewhere in your garden where, where you, you know, maybe you haven't broomed, maybe you haven't collected that matter just look underneath it and that's where the life is so really covering the soil is is, prom is, is the first principle to so your life doesn't run away you know so, so they can be happy to live here in the shade yeah that's pretty much it and um, basically when you look at the forest let's again look to our our model of a perfect ecosystem the soil is always covered. We never see the soil. It's always covered with litter, with dead branches, with fallen trees, and all that part is going on underneath it, right? All the animals, all the small animals, and all the microorganisms, they are underneath it. And maybe you're asking yourself, okay, so what can I use to cover the soil? Dead leaves, dead branches. The rule is everything, anything, Thing that's organic except for those um, for, for fresh animal matter okay we, we don't want to use dead animals to cover the soil right mm -hmm. um, but other than that basically any organic matter is good um, cut grass dead leaves um, banana trunks like we, we, we showed you in one of the videos Whatever it is, it's so powerful. I mean, using grass, see this elephant grass right here next to us. It's four days old. I mean, four days ago, we, 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 we gave it a trim. So it really is, it really is power, you know, it really is matter. And you just trim it and you, and you give it back and you give it back. And, and as you trim it, you're giving it that information, the new boom, grow, growing information. So working with grass is fantastic. Uh, here, because I breed the horses, uh, I use a lot of the uh, horse manure to cover the soil. I don't consider horse manure, uh, yes it's fantastic, it's got a lot of structure, it's got a lot of matter, a lot of organic matter, a lot of fiber, but we know it's not that rich in nitrogen and, and other uh, nutrients that certain plants might need. So really I use a lot of, uh, here for my veg production, we use uh, chicken manure, for, for the for the soil but the horse manure which is what I'm getting at works very well to cover it so it works like a like a blanket on top you know I'm not mixing it up okay so I've got my inputs on the soil and I got this horse manure you know the bed of the barns are made from the trimming from the shredding of the wood okay so we shred the wood and this is where the horses are going to sleep. This is where they're going to spend their night. You know, in the day they're out, they're, they're in, they're having a walk. But uh, nighttime they all go in and they sleep there. So the bed is the, the shredded wood. And then they're doing their thing. You know, you've got the urine, you, you, you've got the manure. They're doing their thing. They're making it really rich. A lot of people are using shredded wood. You know, this is one of the most common use. Because the wood, you know, you attract that fungi and then you create that black soil when it, when it decomposes. And really, it's, it's very rich. If we cover the soil with, with shredded wood, 
you know, you, you're going the right way, you're taking the right steps. Uh, also, obviously, with the green and everything, but uh, really, I have had so much positive result taking the shredded wood and bypassing it through the horses, you know, and it really, it really has made such a positive impact. It really has made such a positive impact. Um, and as you can see, so it's, it's a mix of, of, of uh, horses, horse manure and shredded wood. This is, this is my primary option for covering soil at the Situ of Jazz here. Exactly, and, and this way you can see how that principle that we mentioned in the last module, optimizing resources, is being applied here because um, everything is a resource. And Gennaro realized that he has this resource of shredded wood that he can um, buy or get it for free or produce it here in the property. And if he associate that with his horse shit, um, he can use that and he, that, he has a great material. So it's really about using your head to use the resources that you have available at your place. Mm -hmm. It's what you have available at your place. And so let's go into, let, let's dig a bit deeper here, uh, both literally and uh, what happens underneath the soil? What goes on when you cover the soil that doesn't happen if the soil is left uncovered? Um, when you cover the soil, you're going to influence two basic things, temperature and moisture. So the first thing that you get is lower soil temperature. And that's essential for many bacteria, many fungi, many microorganisms, many small animals and the roots of the plants. Okay? If the soil is uncovered, the plants are they have to deep further down and base their roots there. Whereas if the soil is covered, and this is really not easy to, to, to see. If you, put up, uh, if you cover the soil close to a plant, in no time you're going to see that the plant's roots come to the surface of the soil and they start drinking all that, that healthy juice from the surface of the soil where the soil is richer usually. And so that's the very first basic uh, thing that happens. And you've got some really, really important impact in the, the microorganisms of the soil because you create all the, the, the conditions for their existence and this is food for them and that, as we mentioned earlier the microorganisms are the ones that feed the plants back so this is really essential so you're gonna keep moisture you keep the soil from drying oh right? yeah I mean if you if you have the practice of irrigation uh, three times a day, maybe you'll find that once a day is going to be enough. If it's every three days, maybe you find that once a week is going to be enough, once your soil is discovered. For sure, that's most definitely, because the water is, gonna, is not going to evaporate so much and the water infiltration is going to happen at a more um, paced mm -hmm. rhythm, let's say. And also, you're protecting the, not only you're protecting the soil from the sun, like I mentioned, but you're protecting the soil from the rain, which is a very strong agent of create of destroying the structure oh, yeah. of the soil. So by th this protects the soil from the rain. And I I'd like to get into a point now, which is really important to mention. Um, you know, ma using this material or any other material is not the only way to cover the soil. Because maybe, it's very rare, but you might find yourself in a situation where you don't have anything to use. Mm -hmm. And then what are we going to do in that situation? Oh, many, many, many times we're going to plant a sweet potato, we're going to plant beans, we're going to plant a, a crop that's going to cover the soil for you very quickly. Exactly. So is that what you want me to say? Because that makes sense to me. You know, if sometimes I want to cover the soil. Uh, we've done it many times. We've, we've got the beans coming in. It will quickly come and within 15, 20 days it's covering the soil. And then, you know, I've got the sweet potato backed up underneath it. And once I've harvested this bean, the sweet potato is going to be ready to just come in and take the place. So we, we really use plants when, when we haven't got that much matter. Yeah. I have a very interesting point here as well for you to optimize your resources. Really, 
try to use the correct materials in 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 the most uh, appropriate place so if we have the shredded wood, why is it that we shred this wood because really when we have the veg you know we need to get it working around the little plants if I have big uh, leaves and things maybe it's just not so organized so I keep the leaves the, the heavy material uh, in the in the in the in the tree beds in the corridors and uh, you know uh, we use bananas and trunks a lot in the corridors we sometimes you might want to use a banana trunk in in the drought in, in the vegetable bed because it, it will keep the humidity for the drought so basically what we're saying is try find out where to use best I've got banana trunks I've got shredded wood I've got big leaves so I'm using them in in the most appropriate places uh, covering the corridor is also very important right we don't have that much material yet to cover the corridor it's it's always it's always a process of producing it in my case but really what we want here we want to bring the material to cover the corridor why so we're not compact in the corridor and that means the roots can travel from one line from one one tree bed to the next tree bed the roots you know they will be able to travel if I, if I don't cover the corridors and I'm compacting it it's, I'm going to create islands of, of roots in, in the tree in the tree beds so you know the, it's like the roots got to come and it's going to hit the corridor poof it's compacted so it's going to just stay in the little island really if we can bring that wood that matter and really we can cover the corridors the most we can we're not going to be compacting them and we're going to be facilitating for for all this uh, roots yeah this is a really important point that you mentioned because um, some people that, that start working with um, covering the soil right right with mulch um, they really sometimes cover only the top of the of the bed but really we, we have to consider the, the system as a whole because we want to work the system as a whole we want plants to, to travel freely underneath the ground um, so covering the soil I mean all this material oh I mentioned that you can if you don't have the material you're gonna do a green covering what we call a green covering right because you're gonna cover it with what's live plants here. what's happening right here uh, but really what you want is both you want it both ways because each type of covering acts it has its own specific properties and quality okay the dead material really um, is a substrate for for micro life right for all the microorganisms for fungi to 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 work here and decompose this organic matter and create and release more nutrients to turn back into the plant but this doesn't mean that you don't need live plants here all the time as well because live plants and live roots in the soil and I've mentioned this before you want live roots all the time because really microorganisms are feeding directly and getting those carbohydrates from plants all the time and this is essential so when you you have a perfect green covering of the soil and associated with that a, a, a nice layer of mulch underneath then you you're in paradise then your, your, your crops will really boom and you're going to start reaching maximum levels of photosynthesis and maximum levels of health for your crops, for your plants. And now I, I'd like to get a bit into the, the um, another function and another uh, work that this does, which is structuring the soil. Okay? There are specific bacteria especially here in tropical regions this is very important um, there are specific bacteria that they create and they release a specific substance that structures the soil that create those crumbles in the soil so if you get that sandy soil or that soil that, that that's pulverized right into into a fine powder and this substance that released by bacteria it, it's really going to glue particles together 
And these bacteria, they only thrive if you've got organic matter for them to decompose. So as they decompose this organic matter, the soil becomes structure. Once there's no more organic matter to be decomposed, it's going to lose this structure because the bacteria are not producing that substance anymore. So really, there's a lot to it. We webinar. May, we, we let's webinar a, this. A, let's a, webinar a it. Few <laughs> things, but there's a whole lot of benefits um, from this, and I'm certainly there are many, many, many studies uh, covering the topic, and we really can't reinforce enough the importance of this. This is the first thing. It's a no-brainer. Even if you're gonna do, if, if you wanna, if if you have a, a, a conventional. Um, vegetable garden where you, you plant monoculture and um, uncovered soil the first thing I would recommend is cover the soil cover the soil before first thing experience companion planting before planting trees cover the soil that's gonna boost your your plants health and it's really interesting because just by covering the soil we life comes can produce specific crops in times of the year where people just can't produce. For example, we've got this specific type of lettuce, which is called American lettuce here oh, in yeah. Brazil. Um, there's a, the Great Lakes lettuce and a few other varieties. They don't produce well during the rainy season, right? They just don't because of the... the, the, the contact uh, with, it, with the sand exactly. and the mud. We've and it's got just some bacteria problems. And just by covering the soil, you produce it. You know, that works well with my tomatoes as well. For sure. Well. We're going to talk about my tomatoes in the webinar. That's def definitely sure. Let's do um, it. So I think we can wrap it up here. I think we, we've, we've made an, uh, an impression on how important uh, covering the soil is. And bring on your doubts to, to the webinar. We're going to discuss this topic um, further for sure. And I'll catch you up in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Signing off.